Yesterday, I went looking for joy. So I stopped at the bakery and I asked for joy. And the baker said, we don't have joy here. We just have donuts. Try the butcher. So I went to the butcher shop and I asked, do you have joy? And he said, no, we just have meat. Check with the hardware store. So I went to the hardware store and I asked for joy and he said, no, we don't have joy. We just have tools. Check the giant eagle. So I went to the giant eagle and I asked for joy. And finally, the cashier said, yes, we have joy. It's in aisle 16. So I went down aisle 16. I didn't find joy, but I found Dawn. <laughs> Today is not Dawn Sunday. Today is Joyful Sunday, Gaudete Sunday. It's taken from that first line of the Philippian letter, which is next year's reading. <laughs> Rejoice, be joyful, be cheerful. That's why we light the rose candle. That's why we wear rose, not pink, rose vestments. It's to remind us to be joyful because all our Christmas shopping is done, right? <laughs> well, maybe not. But don't let that get you down. Our challenge is to make this Sunday and this last remaining week before Christmas a season of joyfulness in a world that's full of hurt. So maybe the first place to start is to ask yourself, what brings you joy? Sometimes it's the little things, right? I'll give you an example that happened to me. This past Wednesday, I took my seven-year-old second grade granddaughter to school. I have never done that. It's always somebody else doing it. But she said, Grandpa, we have to leave so we can be first in line. <laughs> so, all right, all right. So I, I drive her to school. We're the third in line. And we have 25 minutes before they're going to unload the cars to take them into the building. So I said to her, what are we going to do for the next 25 minutes? And she says, Papa, do you know who Taylor Swift is? I said, yeah, I've heard of her. I've heard of her. Well, we can watch her videos on your phone for the next 25 minutes. I said, all right, okay. So we turn on the first song, you know the song, because everybody's going to play, 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 and people are going to hate, hate, hate. She knew the song, she knew three of the songs, Taylor Swift, by heart. And I'm thinking to myself, this is a second grader. This kid is seven years old, and she knows all these, and we played them over, so I can't get that song out of my head. <laughs> shake it off, shake it. And I was amazed by that. And then when she was, when it was time to let her out of the car after 25 minutes of Taylor Swift, I said, hey, young lady, tonight is first reconciliation. Do you have that memorized, what you're supposed to do? And you know what she said? No problem, Grandpa. Shake it off. <laughs> Those are the kind of things that bring joy to me, right? Having a little quality time with that little kid and listening to her memorize, whether you like Taylor Swift or not, because I really, I don't care either way. But I just think those are the wonderful moments that we have. That brings me joy. Joy is love. Joy is prayer. Joy is strength. And the best way to show our gratitude to God is accept everything with joy. Mother Teresa said, never let anything so fill you with sorrow as to forget the joy in Christ risen. Even through grief, even through loss of a loved one, as hard as that is, because grief is the noblest of emotions, there's still the joy, the legacy of their life, and the celebration of what now their soul is facing, the light of Christ. Our first reading from Isaiah speaks wonderfully about joy. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me 
because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted. Maybe the most joyful thing we can do is heal someone with a broken heart. Paul tells us in Thessalonians today, rejoice always, rejoice. I, I suspect that joy comes from that word, rejoice. Like do it over and over, re, redo it, rejoice. <clears throat> How does one pray without ceasing? Because Paul talks about that. Well, some say having a joyful spirit is praying without ceasing. Our gospel gives us John the Baptist, a voice crying out in the wilderness, make way the straight of the Lord. John's telling his followers, I'm not the one. It's not about me. In other words, I can't bring you joy, but there's one coming. Here he comes. That's him right there. I'm not fit to untie his sandals. He will bring you the essence of joy, everlasting joy. And maybe the best example in our readings today is Mary. Our responsorial psalm is that great magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly one. From this day forward, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me. Mary is all over the place, right? Mother Teresa, John the Baptist, Mary, they are Christ's bearers, all bearers of great joy. They show us that the mark of a true spiritual servant leader is to be a pointer, to point to Jesus as the source of our joy. He must increase, I must decrease. So this next week, before Christmas, ask yourself this question. This is the question that Father Norm asked our parish council at our meeting this past week. As we always start our meeting with a little meditation, he said, what's the best present you ever got for Christmas? And it was wonderful going around the room and everybody talking about their favorite Christmas present, their memories. And some of these were extravagant things, some of them were simple things. This is one I got last year from Jeffrey. Deacon Robin, don't make me put you in one of my homilies. <laughs> Jeffrey. Oh. <laughs> so those are the things that bring us joy, right? We all have. May they go in joy. We all have special memories. Those things that bring lasting joy, things that change our lives. But do we ever ask ourselves, <clears throat> what's the best gift we ever gave? What's the best gift you ever gave? Maybe it was something you put a, a lot of work into, a lot of thought, a lot of detail, a lot of effort, spent a little extra money. Or maybe it was something as simple as an engagement ring that I gave to my wife 48 years ago on Christmas even though she had to use a magnifying glass to see it, <laughs> she still has it. Joy can't be contained to one Sunday of Advent. Joy starts with us. Joy starts with you and me. So, in the tune of Taylor Swift, joy, 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 dawn, 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 shake it up, shake it up.